Well, this is a moment that a lot of Cyberpunk 2077 fans have been awaiting, and that is the big update for the game. This is a moment that I think a lot of people expected to come a couple months ago. But regardless, here at the end of March, we finally have details on 1.2, and it brings over 500 plus fixes, and gameplay improvements, new features, and changes. Just a lot to go over. And then obviously we have a new leak on DLC plans for Cyberpunk 2077, so a lot to look forward to, but Overall, I will say that this new update that is on the horizon, probably coming by the end of this week, and it's just going to be massive in size, probably upwards of 30 gigabytes on consoles, but it does reinforce the point that this game just was not ready. There's just so many problems that little things that you didn't know was a problem, but it is, and I'm not going to go over all of them because, again, it's 500 of them, but there's just so many little itty-bitty things that you're like, how did that break, and who did that break for? That's, that's crazy, and yeah, there's probably a well over 200 fixes that you're like, was that really a problem? Anyway though, let's first start with the DLC leak. So this is something that was posted on the Cyberpunk 2077 subreddit, and this has gained a lot of traction, and overall it does make a lot of sense, but the following post comes from Prickly Assassin who leaked this, and he said back in February the Epic Game Store changed the total allocated server capacity for Cyberpunk 2077 from 100 gigs to 500. The Epic Game Store usually prepares their servers months before for release of new updates. I also found some information on upcoming DLCs because of this. Back in February, there were 18 free DLCs listed on the Epic Games Store. However, some of them were removed earlier this week, reduced to 10 free DLCs. Three paid DLCs were added this week. However, no details on names or exact prices are available yet. Now, the free DLCs are the following, and we're gonna go over with some suspicions that I have. We have Ripper Docs expansion, which that's probably just going to be some new cyberware that's in the shop. I don't expect anything major, and honestly, with all of this free DLC, really don't expect that this game's just going to turn into something completely different, because that's just not going to happen. I do have some high expectations in terms of new content, but I'm really thinking that uh, that's probably not going to be coming until the paid expansions in 2022. But the next uh, free DLC is Body Shops, which may be related to vehicles. Maybe we can change paint and stuff. Maybe this is the vehicle customization feature that was cut from the game. Maybe they brought it back. Uh, Fashion Forward expansion, I imagine that's just a bunch of new clothing options. Gangs of Night City could be a variety of things, maybe some new gigs or side missions. Body of Chrome, this is a popular thing in the modding community right now, being able to really customize your character. Maybe this is an in-game customization option and also the ability to change your character into Lizzy Wizzy. The Ride to the Dark Future is pretty obvious, that's probably just some new vehicles. The Relic could be attributed to the attribute option that is like glitchy or glitched out within our stack menu. Neck Deep really could be anything. And then we have Night City Expansion. I really do think that this relates to the casino that has, like, it's in the game, but it's only half complete. And this is something that CD Projekt Red's developers talked about months before the game launched. And I imagine this is another piece of cut content that is returning as free DLC. Maybe there'll be a quest or something related to that, but regardless, that's what I envision as the Night City Expansion. And then there is an unnamed free DLC, and maybe more to come. But I think all of this makes sense. That's why I'm not really throwing this leak down. There's nothing too crazy here because I'm not expecting too much from the free DLC and I think that this all fits in the scope that probably CDPR has set. And it definitely is more than what we got with The Witcher 3. And also this is only some of it. There could be even more. Regardless, we probably should be hearing an official announcement sometime soon, especially once this update 1.2 is released and hopefully there isn't any problems with it, which there probably will be. Now there is some other information about this. It says two of these free DLCs have similar names with two promo videos uploaded to the Cyberpunk 2077 channel before the release of the game. I think these two DLCs were originally planned to release as part of the base game, however the devs didn't have enough time, and my suspicion is that a lot more of this free DLC is probably because of the exact reason, it's just cut content finally coming back to the game, which I'm totally fine with because I think this is a lot of highly anticipated stuff that people really wanted from the base game, but now it appears it could be coming and it could be on the horizon if this leak does prove to be true and my suspicion, again, at the moment is that it probably is. Now, within the proof section of this leak, which is screenshots coming from the Epic Game Store, which shows off the free DLC names, we also have the three paid DLCs. Which three of them, that really isn't too surprising since CD Projekt Red really talked about their high expectations for story expansions before launch, and it definitely sounded like it was going to be more than The Witcher 3, and this kind of proves that it will be. Now, what will this content actually be? When is it coming? Probably 2022 
2022 and the only suspicion that I right now have at the moment is that we're going to see V's story continued and probably we'll see the big Mr. Blue Eyes mystery uncovered. We'll finally figure out what's going on with that and if you're not aware of what that mystery is, well basically there is an individual that appears in one of the endings of the game and this individual also appears in some of the other side missions within the game overseeing V and there's theories that he's controlling a lot of what's going on within Night City and we also actually don't even know if he's a he because there's theories that he's actually being controlled by an AI so there's some really cool ideas with where that could go that theory or that mystery is a lot much bigger than what I'm actually saying at the moment because there's rings which match with other characters and I guess the point is that there's some really huge mystery within Night City that right now CDPR has teased but we really don't have enough information on where it could be going which is exciting from a story perspective and then obviously we have a moon mission that's something that I think a lot of us expected we would head outside of Night City maybe that's going to be one of the paid DLCs and then if there is a third who knows where that goes but either way it definitely seems like there's a lot more story content on the horizon which means more Pan Am and Judy now we finally move on to the patch 1.2 notes which have been released today. Right now there is no release date but again I expect it probably later in the week and additionally we already had some videos that were released which were kind of themed in the cyberpunk universe going over a couple of the changes. What that included was the NCPD receiving some bit of changes. It's not really an overhaul. They're just kind of spawned a little bit further away now which is it's something I guess. There's also new steering sensitivity and they also adjust adjusted some of the vehicle steering code and they also have a new feature which now allows you to rock or rotate the vehicle around so it doesn't just stay stuck in a certain spot which was an annoying thing that happened um, in the base game. But now we have the full patch notes which bring a lot more detail so if you really thought that that was it there's a lot more here. The question is how much of this will be actually fixed like how much of the game is now fixed and is this enough to get sony to finally allow cyberpunk 2077 back onto the playstation store because remember it's been over like 90 days since the game has been taken off and there's really been no indication of when it will be returning but i imagine the reason why this patch is coming so late is probably because they want to persuade sony to get it back on now so maybe that announcement could be on the horizon especially with the amount of changes that are here assuming that this all works but it's also worth mentioning that the hack of cd PR, of course, has played a big role in the delay of this significant update. Now, one note before we do proceed forward, if you didn't like Cyberpunk 2077 at launch, this has not become a drastically different game now. Design flaws are still here and may never be resolved. Maybe with time, CDPR will look to overhaul various systems and add more interactivity and features to the open world, but for now, let's get to all the changes, let's talk about it. So, uh, there's minor driving model tune revisions to some vehicles to improve steering, cure excessive body roll and oversteer. Police vehicles will no longer immediately despawn after getting into Carrie's car during Rebel Rebel. This is something a lot of people criticized because there's supposed to be some exciting police chase but as soon as you move the car around the police just completely despawn. Kind of ruins that uh, that mission. Players can no longer cancel fall damage by performing a slide action when about to fall from greater heights. It is no longer possible to perform guerrilla arm finishers against civilians. Uh, they fixed an issue where V could get pushed too far by by a speeding vehicle. If V picks up a body containing a quest item, the item will now automatically be added to the inventory. They fixed an issue where a civilian running from a driver, driving player, could react incorrectly. I'm not even sure what that means because they sometimes don't even react at all, which maybe that is the incorrect uh, movement. They fixed an issue where dodging right after the Krenzikov cyberware effect ended resulted in pushing V a greater distance forward, which I think that was something a lot of people used to navigate through Night City very quickly, even more so than driving a vehicle. They fixed an issue preventing Placide from being taken down in stealth. Cyber psychos and mini bosses are now immune to tranquilizer rounds and system reset quick hack. A V can no longer use consumables in situations where scene context would not support it. Clothing vendors now sell items more suitable for the location. Cat food needed to adopt nibbles can now be bought at several food shops around Night City, which is probably a smart decision since I think originally it was only one place within Arasaka that you could find it. The item for resetting perk points, uh, Tabula e Rasa, can now be bought at a reduced price. I kind of hope that they add something differently. J being able to reset our attribute points would be something really cool. I hope that's something in the future they add, because I don't really care for the perk points one. They reduce the amount of high quality crafting components needed to craft 
unlocked iconic items, that's good. A gorilla arm damage has been increased by 20%. The reduced prices of Kuroshi Optic Fragment Recipes. The reduced power of revolver wielding NPCs. They fixed an issue that caused NPCs to trip over other NPCs too often. And yeah, that happens, especially in a lot of gunfights, which is, uh, takes you out of the moment. They fixed an issue where pedestrians could get teleported after being hit by a vehicle. Transmigration trait is now unlockable at Breach Protocol level 20 rather than 16. Getting knocked down by vehicles no longer kills V after unlocking the rock perk. Fixed an issue where switching the weapon in the inventory two times in a row could result in the weapon not being displayed in game. There's multiple GPS improvements and fixes for the pathing in various activities and quests, which is again a very smart one since sometimes I just got lost with the, the tracking system, which, uh, messy messy, which is uh, kind of the definition of a lot of this game. And really, this is only the start of the fixes, people. I just want you to understand there's just so many. I'm trying my best to highlight the most important ones. They fixed tracked map markers flying off the minimap occasionally, and that happened actually very often for myself. Uh, they corrected use of cover for friendly NPCs. Again, another very, very good improvement. Now, for quest fixes, they have posters and stadium love can no longer be destroyed before the contest. They won't go when I go. Now updates properly of V leaves the studio early. They fix the inability to draw weapons at the poppy farm during the hunt. Again, these are all little issues that probably you didn't suffer, but I guess this was a problem for some. And that's kind of the theme with over 500 fixes and uh, improvements and such. It's no longer possible to get into Delamain and Badlands while riding a motorcycle, which could result in crashes or getting stuck in a third-person perspective. It's no longer possible to leave the quest area while inside the Basilisk and Queen of the Highway. Uh, when Aldicados move or leave Night City, all signs of their old camp will now be cleaned up. Space Oddity no longer spawns multiple paintings, blocking the quest progress. And this was a big money farm method. People got millions upon millions of eddies and it made acquiring cyberware and vehicles very simple and easy and it does seem like I guess my assumption is that this solves that money uh, farming method, which is now no longer possible, I think, from this. Although we'd have to wait until we actually get into the game and see if it is completely gone. But it does seem like it may have been patched out. Jackie will no longer get stuck in all foods if you sneak past the boss fight with Royce. And they fixed an issue where it was impossible to take an elevator to Embers in Nocturne 0.55N1. Which, again, this is just one of those, it's like, really, that was a problem for some? Uh, Judy no longer follows the player around the world if they left the quest area before entering the Braindance studio and Disaster Piece, and I assume that this is one of those glitches that a lot of people actually did enjoy because they were able to have, I guess, unintentional companions with some of the NPCs, and I don't think that this was limited to just Judy because I remember Dum Dum and I believe Pan Am could do the same. I do wonder if those have been patched as well. Uh, they added a physical reward from Regina for defeating all cyber psychos that could be found in her office. This is actually one of the strange things that I, I was kind of stunned by. I was like, is there really no reward for doing all of these, I think it was 17 cyber psycho fights and I guess now there is some sort of reward. Whether that be a weapon or not, I guess we'll have to find out once this patch does release. Delamain now only calls once when V is close to a lost cab and epistrophe instead of calling each time V is in the vicinity of a lost cab, which is great news because I don't know how many times it got spammed with phone calls. Very, very annoying. Um, various other quest improvements and fixes. So yeah, a lot of quest fixes and gameplay fixes fixes so far. Now we move to the open world. Collisions will no longer fail to stream in randomly during driving, which could lead to V, driving into buildings and falling out of the world. Destructibles will no longer become the indestructible after loading a save. They fixed an issue where some dialogue lines could be missing during hollow calls. They fixed an issue where V could get stuck in combat in any gig until all enemies were defeated. That's a problem that I encountered on PC. It is no longer possible to stop the fixer's car in the middle of the road in gig getting warmer, which could lead to blocked progression. Again, this is actually one of the big uh, gigs that is just completely broken in my game, and right now there isn't really any details on the rest of this quest, which I really do hope that this patch actually fixed that one so I could, you know, actually completely finish the game, but this is the only mention of it, so it doesn't actually seem like this uh, has been fixed unless this is one of the unnamed changes. They fixed an issue where the urinary stream could still be visible after NPCs stopped peeing and moved away from the spot. Yeah, that was 
something that was in all the highlight reels of this game. Uh, NPCs will no longer stay blocked on traffic lanes while in fear. NPCs hit by a car will now immediately run in panic, which, yeah, makes more sense. They added different animation variations for pedestrians running away from a vehicle. That's good. Uh, they added the missing animation for opening the doors in several quests, improved force opening door animations, they added missing unauthorized prompts for elevators protected by authorization, and various immersion improvements and fixes in the open world encounters and gigs. All of this definitely beneficial to the game, and hopefully the future of this game. Uh, now to the cinematic design, progress will no longer be blocked when players chooses the corporal line twice while talking to Hanako and the safe house during search and destroy. Just another example of one of those issues that you didn't think was an issue or know that was an issue. Uh, Mako will no longer walk through the couch in uh, PCS. Uh, they fixed a camera issue, never fade away. They added depth of field effect of the player's view at significant moments. They added touchscreen animations in Pan Am's car and lightning breaks in life during wartime. And they fixed NPC T-posing in the dollhouse and automatic love. And they continues, it says, fix facial animations and all the scenes where V leans on the mirrors throughout the game. Uh, characters no longer teleport near the player while in a hollow call dialogue. They fixed multiple issues with V wearing the wrong clothes in third person perspective. They fixed multiple issues during those fun scenes, and they improved interruption system for scenes. Now I will mention, I kind of hope that one of the big improvements, especially with the third person perspective, which is shown in mirrors and when you're on motorbikes, hopefully I'm not bald all the time because that was one big bug that may be just a little bit annoying. Now the last couple changes here in cinematic design, they fixed multiple issues with important quest NPCs randomly missing animations during cinematics, interrupting dialogue will now stop the voiceover line, and they fixed multiple issues with NPCs mounting vehicles. Now to the environment and levels. They fixed an issue where two fast travel points were missing map pins, just I didn't even know that was a thing. They fixed multiple issues related to improper NPC behavior in combat, for example not changing to the correct attack mode or getting stuck in a location. They fixed multiple issues related to NPCs not reacting to V's presence or not entering combat properly. They fixed multiple issues related to NPCs clipping with objects, fixed a number of issues related to wrong or missing contents of lootable items, they fixed multiple issues related to V not being able to interact with lootable items, and they fixed multiple issues related to improper functioning of devices such as cameras, turrets, or mines. And they also fixed an issue where the basilisk could fall under the map when the door leading to Mikoshi is reached. And they fixed the misspelled Leaving Night City sign, which, yeah, that was one of the comical things that a lot of people brought up, that there was various spelling errors throughout the game. Uh, they fixed multiple issues where players could fall out of the map due to gaps and missing collisions. They fixed multiple issues where players could get stuck in location geometry, multiple issues issues where players could reach unintended areas, uh, multiple issues with disappearing or misplaced assets, with assets floating in the air, with assets appearing or changing appearance on site, some issues with parts of assets missing allowing the player to see inside, issues where rain could be present in covered areas, issues with invisible colliders present on locations, and they fixed multiple issues with higher resolution textures failing to stream in. And just insane how many things were broken with this game and I'm still not sure how much of the game is actually fixed at this point. Now for graphics, audio, and animation, they fixed NPCs moving after being killed, improvements in textures rendering from afar, fixed a visual issue with fast travel and cinematic transition, they adjusted visual quality of some elements when underwater, which is good, hopefully some of the uh, shadows have been adjusted because it's comical when you're underwater, improvements in materials, details, quality, they fixed V's incorrect position while riding a motorcycle, which hopefully that's related to the bug that I've had, improvement for interior and exterior light sources, adjusted dirt quality on medium and low settings, they improved foliage, destruction visuals, V's hands are now correctly displayed on a steering wheel while driving, V now leans out of a vehicle correctly during chases, uh, they fixed an issue where the character could appear deformed while mounting motorcycles, pretty sure that's the issue I had especially when I went into photo mode and then exited, uh, they fixed a level of detail issue occurring for joy toys in Jig Jig Street, fixed several issues with missing lip sync, fixed multiple issues with NPCs T-posing, camera no longer flips when V is under an object and jumps, and they improved camera movement when entering a vehicle, NPCs will no longer shout after being killed. Now, this is probably the most funny one. Jackie no longer shouts <laughs> nice shot when V kills enemies while in stealth mode. Uh, they also fixed NPC animation issues after skipping the ride, they fixed faraway terrain disappearing in the Badlands, and other city parts visible
visible from the distance now look more realistic due to adjusted lighting, although seeing 2D car models running around is kind of, uh, uh, it takes you out of the immersion. Now, related to the user interface, they fixed an issue with ads not being properly displayed on curbs, multiple visual updates and adjustments for ads, updated grenade icons according to their damage type, fixed multiple visual issues with the icons display, and issues in the UI panels including journal, map, scanner, and others. Uh, entering a vehicle right before opening the vehicle menu should no longer block progression. The health bar should now be visible during car chases. Perform performance improvements to the inventory panel. They also fixed issues with button hints, uh, character creation panel, and they have multiple fixes and improvements to the crafting panel. And this is actually a big change that a lot of people were hopeful for with crafting. They had added an option to craft multiple items at once, and they added a crafted icon to the tooltip of crafted items. They also fixed an issue where preview stats show the same values before upgrading an item. There's multiple adjustments for the D-pad input, fixed multiple issues related to the heads-up display elements, multiple fixes in the inventory and backpack panels. There's also multiple fixes and adjustments to the main menu and settings panels. And there's optimizations for crafting panel and items display. There's also multiple fixes and adjustments for input issues, various UI performance and stability improvements. Epic and legendary loot dropping from defeated enemies are now better visible on the mini map. Threat level for undiscovered gigs is now displayed correctly. Now moving to the stability and performance, they improve stability and performance of the engine and the rendering engine, uh, memory optimizations and memory management improvements in various systems. Uh, this is also largely related to console performance, which hopefully solves a lot of the issues that base PlayStation 4 and Xbox One users are having. There's various optimizations and improvements in shadows, shaders, physics, work spot system, spawn system, scene system, animation system, occlusion system, and facial animation system. Multiple UI stability improvements and fixes for the most common UI related crashes. There's various crash fix among others in settings menu and upon reloading saves repeatedly during gameplay and GPU related. There's multiple UI performance improvements. They fixed a performance drop during controller button mashing causing V to receive multiple copies of the same item. And then there's various other improvements to stability and performance. Now miscellaneous changes include they fixed an incorrect censorship when playing a copy of the game from a region other than Japan. While the console region is set to Japan, there's a settings option to hide potential enemy markers. They also added a setting option to hide NPC names overhead. Uh, logic for loading last checkpoint when there is no existing save file improved. They fixed an issue where the player could get locked in an aiming or crouching state after leaving a vehicle. Now to PC specific changes, they enabled ray tracing on AMD graphic cards. The latest GPU drivers are required. Keyboard bindings, more keys are now available for rebinding. Achievements will now work on the Epic Game Store. I didn't actually know that was a problem. And now this is a modding change. They added a new mod folder for loading modded archives. The modded archives can be named in any way and go into the mod folder now. Having mod archives in the patch folder is no longer supported. Now for console supported changes, they have various memory handling optimizations on Xbox. There's also various environment streaming and input slash output improvements, various NPCs and vehicle streaming improvements, and lastly, they fixed the missing water service shader on PlayStation 4. And then lastly, CDPR says that there are many more changes within this patch. Like I said, this is going to be massive and I feel like I've been talking for the last 30 minutes about all these changes but this is definitely the step in the right direction that I really think a lot of people expected to come probably a couple months ago but it regardless it is here. Many in the Cyberpunk 2077 community have been saying for a while now that they're waiting for the game to get better. They're waiting for a patch to really fix the game so they can finally dive in. On Steam charts the game has actually dropped from over 1 million players at launch to just about 10,000. So I do wonder if we're going to see a drastic increase assuming that this patch does solve a lot of the problems and doesn't reintroduce problems, which we have seen as an issue with Cyberpunk 2077 updates in the past. But like I said before, I think that this is definitely the needed patch that a lot of people were extremely hyped for or excited for a while ago. And this just is further indication that this game was just not ready. It needed probably a launch in 2022. It is interesting how in CDPR's apology from management, they said that their testing didn't see the amount of issues that we encountered at launch. And then you look at this enormous 8,000 word patch notes detailing hundreds upon hundreds of fixes and improvements. Clearly this game needed another year or two of testing and they had to have known that. It's just unfortunate in December 2020 we got a game that mirrored or was arguably in a pre-alpha state. But 
It's awesome that the CD Projekt Red developers are working their butts off. That's what some of them have been taking to Twitter saying, and they're proud of this. And I do think that this is the step in the right direction. And we'll see what this game has to offer with free DLC and other updates in the future. But I definitely think that this is going to be the most significant update that we see probably in its lifetime. Anyway, is this enough to get you back into Cyberpunk 2077? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. But thank you for watching. Make sure to leave a like if you did enjoy this video or if you found any informative value and make sure to follow my other social media accounts for updates on new videos. Links are always down in the description below. I'm most active on Twitter giving opinions on news that I do not always get into video form so do make sure to follow me over there. Also check out my discord for all sorts of discussion on games and again thank you for joining. Consider subscribing for more videos like this and I'll see you later.